How's it going everyone? So today we're going to go over a linked list problem called Merge Two Sorted Lists. This problem is asked at a bunch of top tech companies, so I figured it'd be a good problem to go over. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon. The link will be in the description. If you do want to support me, you will get access to a private Discord channel where you can go in and ask me or other people questions. So onto the problem. The description says Merge Two Sorted Linked Lists and return it as a new list. The new list should be made by splicing together the nodes of the first two lists. So it's pretty easy to understand what we have to do. We're given two sorted linked lists and we need to return a new linked list that have combined both of our originals in sorted order. So let's go over an example. In our function, we're given two sorted lists, L1 and L2. And to solve this problem, we're going to need to have a couple of other node pointers. So the first node that we're going to create, we can call our head. And the second node will be current. So our head node, as described by the name, will keep track of the head of our resulting list that we eventually return from our function. And then as for our current node, that will always be at the very end of our resulting list. Because as we're iterating over L1 and L2, we're going to need to copy those nodes we're currently looking at to our current node. So our head node initially can just be a dummy value. So we can just put this to negative one, but this could be any arbitrary number. And then as for current, it will always be at the very end of our resulting list. So that means it can just start at null. So we need to iterate over L1 and L2. So we're gonna have one pointer looking at L1, one pointer looking at L2, and as we are iterating over these lists, we need to determine which number has a lesser value. So since both of these values are the same, it doesn't matter which one we take, but let's just take L1. So now the number one from L1 was assigned to our cur node, and we have also moved our pointer of L1 to the number two. And once we are finished doing that, now we just need to move current to our head. So our current node got reset back to null, and now we need to compare one and two. Obviously one is less than two, so now we take the value from L2. So we assign number one to current, and then we move the L2 pointer up to value three, and now we just need to make sure that the current gets set to our head at the very end. Current gets set back to null, and now we compare two and three. Obviously the two is less than three, so we move two to current. Our L1 pointer moves forward, and now we assign two to the end of our head. Now we are looking at three and four. Three of L2 is less, so we assign three to current. Our L2 pointer moves forward, and then we assign current to the very end of our head node. Once again, we're at a position where both of the nodes have the same value. So just for consistency, we're gonna take the value from L1 and assign four to current. So we moved the pointer of L1 forward, and then now we need to assign current to the very end. Now we're looking at four and 10, four is less than 10, so we take the value from L2. So we moved our L2 pointer forward, and now we need to assign current to the end of our head. So now we're at an interesting position. Our L2 pointer is looking at a null value. So anytime we have a null value in our L1 or L2 pointer, we know we can just immediately take the non-null value. So in that case, that would be 10 from L1. So our L1 pointer moves forward, and then our current is going to get set to the end. So now we're at a point where both L1 and L2 are looking at null values. So that is how we will know that we are finished iterating over both of the lists. And now all we need to do is return head.next. Because remember, we initialize head to an arbitrary value, negative one, and then head.next is the entire combined list of L1 and L2. So we're given two list nodes, L1 and L2, and we need to return a list node, the result of combining both. So let's create both our head and current nodes that we talked about. So our head is going to just be initialized to a negative one, just an arbitrary value. And then our current will just look at head. 
And that way, as we are iterating over L1 and L2, we can just assign those values to current and those will automatically be set to our head node. So now we just need to iterate over L1 and L2. So we could say while L1 is not equal to null or L2 is not equal to null. The reason why we're going to do an or is because if we still have elements in L1 or L2 to look at, we don't want to just exit as soon as one gets null. We want to make sure that we exhaust looking at both lists. So now that we have done that, we're going to have four different conditions. The first one is if L1 is null. The second one is if L2 is null. The third, if L1's value is less than L2's value. And then lastly, if L2's value is less than L1's value. So I've initialized all of our conditions. So let's start with L1 is equal to null. If L1 is null, we know we can just take the value from L2. So all we have to do for that is we could say cur.next is equal to whatever L2 is. And since we are getting the value of L2, we now need to move L2's pointer forward. So we're going to say L2 equals L2.next. Now, as for if L2 is equal to null, we're pretty much going to do the same thing that we did it when L1 is null, except opposite. So we're going to do cur.next is now equal to L1. And that means we need to move our L1 pointer forward. So L1 equals L1 dot next. And now if L1 value is less than L2's value, then that means we need to assign it to whatever L1 has. So we're going to do the same conditions that we did in this if statement here. It's the same exact logic. And then likewise, when L2's value is less than L1's value in this else statement, we can just take this logic here, because this would mean that we are going to move L2's pointer forward and just take that value. So now that we have written all the logic for those conditions, the last step is just to move our current node forward. So when we come out of all these checks, we can say cur is equal to cur.next. So that's going to move it to a null value. And when we come out of the while loop, like as I mentioned before, we just need to return head.next because our current head is just an arbitrary value. So we want to get whatever is directly after it. So we could say return head.next. So let's just make sure this code works. And there we go. So the time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of M plus N, where M is the number of nodes that we have in L1 and N is the number of nodes that we have in L2 because we have to touch every single node in both L1 and L2 a single time. That makes it a linear runtime algorithm. And then as for our space complexity, it is actually constant. It may seem like line 13 and 14 cause greater space than constant. However, keep in mind that we will only initialize these single pointers. No matter if the size of our input grows, it will always just be head and current staying the same. So that makes our space complexity constant. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if there's any other types of videos you want me to do. I'm open to doing linked list problems, trees, graphs, dynamic programming. I really don't care. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.